brake is kind of squeaky. You know that old saying, they say never meet your heroes? The Aprilia RS660 is a rare example in which that is not true. Before this video begins, this is going to be a long detailed video, I can already feel it, uh, this bike lives up to the hype. I'm going to get into why it lives up to the hype in this video, but I just wanted you to know, before you even watch it, this bike lives up to the hype. What is going on everybody? Welcome to another episode of Yammy Noob. This is the Aprilia RS660. You guys know I've been simping and dying to ride this thing, and this one is special because it is one of our giveaway motorcycles. Yes, I believe I am one of the few people in the known universe to be giving one of these away for free. Go to yamanube.co, find out how you can become a member, sign up to win this motorcycle. You can also get entered at yamanubemerch.com. The dollar you spend is an entry to win. It's going to be a giveaway motorcycle. Don't miss out. Needed to tell you guys that before we begin. All right. So, if you've been living under a rock, Aprilia, back in 2018, released a prototype version of this at Eichma, and they were like, hey, we're making a lightweight sport bike. It's going to be a 660-ish CC machine. Lightweight, very fun to ride, more street-oriented, very cool, very fun. And uh, here it is. We finally have it here in America. They finally started selling it. I bought mine from the good folks over at Eurocycle. You guys know they're a preferred dealership, so I buy motorcycles from them. So, what are some quick specs on this bike? Well, first of all, price tag, $11,300 for this bad boy. Some of you I say, oh, yam, that's a little spicy, but we're going to get into that later today. Powered by a 660cc parallel twin engine, 270 degree crank, makes about 100 horsepower, weighs in at just under 400 pounds, has full APRC electronics, so we're talking wheelie control, traction control, slide control, ABS, all the good stuff, you know, bunch of traction control systems and electronics working away for you, up and down quick shifter. It features a Brembo dual disc setup up front, radially mounted as you can see there. Now this is not a Stylema Brembo, this is a pin style here, relatively cheaper type of Brembo, not as huge honking brakes as we'd normally see on a top-end leader bike or something like that, but honestly, this thing stops just fine, mostly because it has a pretty generous master cylinder right here. There's a pretty nice braking setup. Uh, this master cylinder setup here is very similar to the 675's setup, um, and it works really, really well. Uh, I know that because I swapped an RCS-19 on my race bike, so I remember popping off a lever that looked just like that. Fully adjustable suspension, rebound and compression, preload up front, all the goodies. Same thing for back here. Not a linkage suspension, bolts directly to the swing arm, which is, you know, a bit weird, but that works. And uh, yeah, it's kind of a little peach, a little sweetheart of a motorcycle. Um, we're going to get into today all the way that this thing rides. We're going to get into why I feel like this thing is better than 600cc super sports in a lot of ways what the difference is between this and that, quality versus quantity of performance. There's lots of points I want to get into today. Uh, but what do you say we jump aboard this machine and start talking about it? So when you swing a leg over the Aprilia, the first thing you notice is you're like, wait a minute, I'm not super hunched over. I don't feel like my pegs are touching my butt. What's going on here? So this machine is much more street-oriented, as Aprilia wants you to know. The ergonomics are somewhere between a Yamaha R6 and a Ninja 650. So you're not, you know, fully leaned over over here. You can actually tell that these clip-ons uh, actually are raised a little bit right here. So these clip-ons are raised and integrated into the triple tree, which is a bit of a bummer. But we're going to get into that later today as well and talk about uh, some of the shortcomings of this machine as well. Um, so flipping the key here, you see... Get a very cool little, I think it's like a 5-inch TFT, 4-inch, something like that. It's not very big, which I kind of like. I don't like the huge 7-inch TFTs or whatever. So that's got to be maybe maybe 4 inches. I can't really tell. Um, so put it in neutral here, and we will start it up so you guys can take a listen. And so what's cool about this bike is it's actually exactly half of a Aprilia RSV4. Now, it's not exactly an RSV4's engine lopped in half because its displacement numbers don't make sense, but uh, it's pretty dang close. They stroked it out a little bit, so it's got a longer stroke on it, 660 cc's or so, and it sounds pretty zingy. Take a listen. You can definitely feel that it's a hopped up engine. This thing is not a lazy traditional parallel twin. Whatever you have in your mind of a parallel twin, like a Ninja 650 or a Yamaha R3, this is completely different than one of those engines. Um, it revs out 
way harder, makes a lot more peak power, 270 degree crank. It's got a lot of character and emotion about it. So today, we are gonna take it off immediately into a nice twisty road here. We're gonna get it out on the highway. We're then gonna maybe just bop around with it a little bit, talk about it a little bit more, and then we're gonna get back in the shop and do a quick little Discord Q&A. So come along with me. Let's ride the Aprilia R660 and let's do this. Oh, of course, obligatory. Tenant wheelie. We'll try to pop a little wheelie here. There we go. Little baby wheelies with the Aprilia RS660. <laughs> All right. Taking a left over here onto this beautiful road. Oh, clicking it up through the gears on the RS660. What a lovely little machine. So as I mentioned in the beginning, this bike lives up to all the hype that you've been hearing about it on the internet. Everyone's been ranting and raving about this thing, and it is for good reason. I am proud to report that this bike, per Aprilia's design brief of what they were trying to accomplish with it, succeeds on nearly every metric. This is an awesome little sport bike. I really dig it. Let's talk about why I really dig it. So number one, carving these very careful little lines here through these corners. The Aprilia, despite being lightweight, is so sure-footed. It doesn't flick in really quickly to corners. It's not darty. What Aprilia has done is made a motorcycle that is much more confidence-inspiring mid-corner than it is darty and flighty, which is really cool because a lot of 600cc bikes tend to be really darty and flighty and uh, they don't actually have very proper mid-corner stability. And what they do as well is they have handlebars that are really tight to the, to the body like this and um, really kind of weird and darty. You can look at a ZX6, for example. If you look at the stock bar setup on that bike, it's so narrow and close to the tank Whereas the RS660, you know, it's already way more track set up for it. You know, it's got these wide bars, really sure-footed entry into corners, not really flighty and nimble like, uh, you know, like a little Yamaha R3 or Ninja 400. It's much more planted, much more stable, much more of a proper grown-up sport bike. Um, I really, really like this thing because all the controls on it feel just really nice. The throttle response is really smooth and linear. It doesn't give me any kind of herky-jerkiness. And this engine is just such a little peach of an engine. Um, makes really strong linear power. That's what makes this thing so different than a traditional 600cc super sport. You don't really have to wring its neck to get going. You see here I'm in fourth gear at 4,000 RPM. If I flick the wick, I get a nice surge of power going forward. So what that means with that throttle response and that mid-corner stability is this is a very confidence-inspiring motorcycle. And it's easy to ride too really easy to ride because it's set up to be more of a street oriented bike the cool part about it is it doesn't really wear you out while you ride it it just feels really mellow to ride and the thing that i started thinking about once i rode this thing is you know it's kind of silly that yamaha and kawasaki and a lot of the 600 cc makers uh, are selling you a bike that is track ready and they expect you to ride it around on the daily and not get you know tired of it or bored of it in that configuration if you're a normal kind of track day guy that goes to the track you know maybe four or five times a year which for a lot of guys is really pushing it why would you have a motorcycle that is set up you know to go on track all the time when you only go four or five times out of the year it makes a lot more sense to have a motorcycle like this where it is still really fun and playful and easy to ride but can still be taken out to your local track to have some fun with as well so the aprilia comes together as a street oriented motorcycle that can be occasionally taken out on track which is what most people want out of a bike they don't want a super committed hardcore motorcycle which is why people have flopped back to the naked category because they're like well i want handlebars i want to be comfortable but what they've realized is that you know 
people still want a fully fared motorcycle like this. They still they still want something that looks cool and can be ridden around and you can, you know, have a bike that looks like a proper sport bike as opposed to a naked bike that you have to explain to everybody to what it is. You know, a lot of people still really dig fully fared bikes and they don't mind the plastics and all that stuff, which is really cool, you know. I, I think the Aprilia has done a really good job in uh, kind of positioning itself as a fun, sporty looking motorcycle that people still really want to own and ride. the Aprilia is awesome. It zings up really, really nicely. It makes a great sound, you know? It makes a really, really great sound. Auto blip down works really, really well. It's a really well sorted little motorcycle, man. going through here at a fun street pace with this thing. It just feels so good. On-off throttle is really nice too. Click it up into third here. Yeah, this is great, man. And one of the big things that people worry about when it comes to this category of bike, you know, Kind of the sub 130 horsepower or so that the 600s make there's like oh my buddies are gonna leave me behind you know i don't make enough power and this and that and unless you're just doing massive highway pulls with your friends which if you are you're probably not looking at an aprilia rs660 as a bike to buy but actually let's let's get a little pull on the power shall we I love the power on this thing. It's great. It's usable, you know? Really usable. And like I was saying, unless you're going out and doing a bunch of highway pulls with your buddies, I don't know, man. 100 horsepower is plenty. I, I like having a buttload of power, don't get me wrong. Like, we've got the ZH2 in the shop right now, and it's just stupid to ride. But if you want a more balanced, a more complete, a more quality over quantity type of performance that the RS660 can offer. This bike's really damn hard to beat. This is a great bike to own if you want one single motorcycle to do track days with, to commute with, to enjoy a twisty canyon carving experience with. You know, it fits the mold for all those things really, really well. It can be used in all those ways really, really well too. Um, I, I'm really enjoying this thing. It feels really awesome to ride. I'll be curious to see what kind of lap times I can put down with it in stock configuration. Um, because a lot of folks, as I mentioned, they're worried about the lack of power. But here in Texas, unless you're talking a huge track like Coda, I mean, the difference between a leader bike and a 600 is only about a second or a second and a half in terms of lap records. You can't really exploit the 70 extra horsepower that a leader bike has over a 600. And, you know, I think for most, C, B, A groups or level one, two, three riders for track day guys, you know, non-club racer kind of guys. Um, this bike is amply capable of keeping up with whatever else everybody else is riding. Um, I really think that unless you're a really stellar rider or a 90th percentile type of rider, um, you're not gonna be completely beaten up by 600s on track with this thing. So I really wouldn't worry about that. And you could ride this thing to the track and ride it back the same day if you wanted to, if the weather was nice enough. Um, this is the type of motorcycle where, I mean, the ergonomics are so nice. They're, they're so amenable. Um, I'm kind of shocked. One thing that this bike reminds me so much of, and I, I bet Ducati, I'm already, I'm already on thin ice with Ducati after my Multistrada review, but you know, this honestly reminds me of a Panigale V2. Uh, the sound that it makes, the ergonomics package, the slickness of it, the quick shifter up and down, the sound that it makes, the it, just everything about it, it feels just like a little bit more comfortable Panigale V2. Very similar to the Panigale V2, honestly. Which again, Ducati probably does not want to hear that Aprilia's little middleweight, you know, pocket rocket uh, feels like their entry level Panigale, but it really kind of does, which is weird. Um, yeah, it does. It's just awesome. 
again, like I said, you know, it's so much more about the quality of the performance here than the quantity. I don't miss the top end power at all. Do I notice it? Yeah, sure, this thing doesn't feel as fast as the 600. It really doesn't. But I don't really miss it all that much because on the everyday and the around the town kind of stuff, it feels faster than a 600, honestly, because you don't have to rev it out. And it feels less theatrical than a 600. It feels more like a normal motorcycle that you can enjoy and have fun with. And that's what I think a lot of people are starting to realize. They're like, hey, I don't actually need a homologation race replica motorcycle to take out to my twisty roads and have fun with. Um, and again, that's why naked bikes have been so popular. They've been popular because people have realized that, you know, it's way better to own a motorcycle that you can actually ride and enjoy. You want to put a lot of miles down. You don't want to just go out for 30 minutes at a time on your big bad leader bike and then just come out, you know? And a lot of folks are much more willing to have a motorcycle like this than a big bad leader bike as well. Um, so yeah, I think that wraps up the twisty road section. What do you say we get this thing out on the highway and uh, see how it's like to just kind of poodle around with and maybe test the cruise control and some other features that this thing has, shall we? Alrighty, everybody, merging onto the highway now. Taking a right here onto Highway 360 in Austin, Texas, big 360 bridge, well known. And uh, yeah, let's talk about the RS660 a little bit in these conditions. So again, this is a motorcycle that's designed to be able to be a commuter bike, designed to you know fulfill the everyday rider type of thing. I think it does a really good job of it, honestly. I was just uh, passing a, a truck back there, and um, you know I, I like the passing power that this thing has. And the one thing I was thinking about is that this motorcycle genuinely feels quite different than any other middleweight or super sporty kind of bike that I've ridden. Again, it, it really is crazy how it really is between something like a Ninja 650 and an R6. Um, and I never realized that we needed something like that in motorcycling, but we desperately needed this bike. If we want people to continue being excited about sport bikes and continue wanting to own sport bikes, it's so important for us to continue innovating and making different types of motorcycles that fit the current market conditions. And this is a bike that I feel like absolutely nails it and hits the moment that we are all in right now. Now, I do think that it is a bit expensive. I, you know what? I really wish that Aprilia had made two versions of this bike. I wish they had made an RS660 SP, which would have been this, but with, you know, maybe an Olin's front end and everything else exactly as is. That would have been the RS660 SP. And I wish they would have made an RS660 R that would have just been the like a much more bone standard version of the RS660. It could have had a super simple TFT, no rider modes, no quick shifter, none of the farcles, and made it maybe under $10,000. That I think would have been the killer bike. But you know, they've only made this one version for now. They have just the RS660 and they are making the Tuono 660. So that does make it uh, a little bit, you know, uh, street oriented versus track oriented. But I do think that if they had made a version of this without all the crazy electronics and stuff, because let me see if I can actually access this while I'm out on the move here. I probably can. I'm gonna press and hold this. Uh, it doesn't seem to be letting me. I probably gotta be off the throttle here and I'm in the middle of traffic, which is making it difficult. Actually, let's turn left up here, and uh, that'll make it a lot easier. Can I access it? Oh, I probably have to be completely stopped to access all the electronics. Let me see if I can do that for you guys. I'll pull over here, and I'll, I'll take a look. I'll, I'll show you what I'm talking about here. Uh, that's somebody's house, I think. Here we go, there's the street. Alrighty, it's in neutral, it's fully stopped, will you let me look through? Alright, so yeah, this is what I'm saying, like you have commute mode, dynamic mode, individual mode, you can adjust all those different modes, and then you can go back here and if you press and hold this, um, you get access to the vehicle mode, you can change it from road to race, you can move that around, I mean there's there's so many different features and modes and I've told you guys this a lot that I do prefer a motorcycle that's a little bit more simple and uh, mellow 
So I do think that Aprilia missed out by not making two versions of the RS660. I really do think that. Anyways, I promised you guys we would check out the cruise control function. So let's go check it out, shall we? Bang a Yui here. How's the lock to lock on the Aprilia? Uh, pretty good. You get some pretty good turns out of it. Pretty good little U-turnability. This rear brake is kind of squeaky. I'm hoping that that goes away with time, but it is a little, a little odd. I don't know if you guys can hear that. <laughs> rear brake is just kind of making a strange noise there. So yeah, I, like I was saying about the electronics, I went ahead and put it in individual mode for me here. And uh, that is, let's see what I did. Max power, yeah, max power, minimal engine brake, minimal level of traction control. I put it at two just in case things get crazy. No wheelie control in the minimum ABS. So it's basically like borderline race mode, but just with a little bit of TC. That's, that's how I like riding my bikes. I basically always ride them full power. Unless I'm, no, even the ZH2, I always keep it in sport mode. I don't put it in rain mode or anything like that. <laughs> Why? Why do that when you have 200 horsepower, right? Alrighty. Should be able to get another little pull here with the RS660. Useful little power. Useful bike. Come on, you can turn. Come on, turn left. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, the cool thing as well is you can actually change the uh, lights. So I've got mine in high beams right now. As you can maybe see in the reflection of this uh, minivan up here. Got it in high beam mode. And then if I hit this again, I'm in DRL mode or daytime running light mode, uh, which is pretty cool. So yeah, let's uh, wick it up to maybe 60 miles per hour or so. You press and hold this over here for the cruise control. And then if you hit this down for set, maybe I gotta press and hold. Nope, press up. Nope, how do I do this? <laughs> oh, there we go. And there we go, cruise control is on. Got my hand off the bar here. I'm gonna take a uh, take a little right here. And now we're in full cruise control mode, just hanging out here. And that's a cool feature to have on a bike like this, honestly. Like you, you wouldn't expect a, a middleweight sport bike to have cruise control, but that's what happens when you start having trickle down technology from other bikes. And as you see up here, I gotta tap the brakes a little bit and cruise control gets turned off. You got people running over to the right of the lane because they don't trust their brakes, which is always a funny thing that Texas drivers do for some reason. All you gotta do is just step on your brakes, guys. I promise they work. You don't have to deviate off to the right. <laughs> kind of a funny thing that people do. So cruise control will blink at you uh, while it is disengaged but turned on. And then when you turn it off completely, as I'll do right here, you just press and hold that, and then the little light stops blinking and you don't have cruise control anymore, which is pretty cool. And I used to not really dig cruise control on motorcycles because to me I was like, oh, that means it's like full ride by wire and the, the throttle feel isn't very good. And while that was true for maybe the first or second generation of ride by wire systems, guys, nowadays ride by wire is so good. Um, I mean, this feels like a, a proper throttle. This feels just absolutely sublime. It's a little springy because it has to replicate the feel of a cable throttle but it's really great and it gives you access to features like the up down quick shifter specifically the down quick shifter because you can't do that unless you have ride by wire and you also get cruise control and stuff like that so to me it's just a, a win all around i really really enjoy it i mean you know cruising here on the highway just mingling with traffic and stuff this is definitely a motorcycle that you could use every day um it's not punishing to ride at all uh, this feels only marginally more aggressive than a 650 class bike, honestly, uh, which is really great. You know, it kind of feels a lot like the SV650X, except the pegs are actually in a proper position. We'll turn this back on, hit the cruise. There we go. Now we're cruising once again. And whether you like it or not, cruise control is a cool feature to have if you just want to, you know, poodle down the road and just enjoy your bike or you're just trying to make it back from a twisty road that you were on earlier or something like that, you know. Sometimes you don't want to, you know, just 
go faster. Just keep your hand on the throttle. It's kind of a nice feature. So anyways, now we're going to head back to the Yami Noob office. We're going to take some questions from Discord, some common questions that people had about the RS660, and wrap up this video, shall we? Alrighty everybody, we're back in the shop after our first ride and impression of the RS660. I now put up on Discord a quick Q&A section. I was like, hey, I'm riding the RS660 today. If you got questions, let me know. If you want cool behind the scenes access to this sort of content, you can always head over to yamenoob.co and join up. So let's get started. Uh, CoolChris1225 asks, does it ride like a banana? It does, like a very fast and cool banana. Damon asks, how comfortable slash usable is it as a daily bike? I personally think that this motorcycle makes a fantastic daily rider. Uh, it doesn't feel very aggressive on the back at all. Um, it's pretty amenable to ride on the daily. I think if you wanted a sport bike, you could do a whole lot worse than the R660 for a daily ride. Uh, Matthew asks, what are your first mods or wishlist items for the bike? For me, I'd love some tank grips. I'd love an exhaust. And that's kind of it. Uh, I think with those two mods, it would be pretty much ready to go, set and ready to ride. Spitting Llama asks, how comfortable would a passenger be? Well, you know, when it comes to seats on sport bikes, I've definitely seen worse than these. Um, this is all a foam pad right here and these passenger pegs seem pretty amenable. So I think that a passenger would probably do okay on this machine. Sport bikes aren't really known for their great passenger accommodations, but this one is definitely a little bit better than some that I've seen. Uh, Kiala asks, what is your favorite characteristic about it? Um, for me, my favorite characteristic is the engine and just the way that it feels mid-corner. It has a really linear, smooth power delivery, and when it's on the side of the tire, it just, it just sticks and plants itself. It never gets out of sorts. It's very sure-footed. Um, which is a really great feeling. It's very easy to ride when you jump aboard and it just feels like it's a well-fit glove or something like that. Um, Hacksaw SF asks, is it cool to wear high-vis on a high-vis bike? I was actually thinking about that where you really don't need to even wear high-vis when you've got a high-vis motorcycle. So thank you, Aprilia, for the high-vis motorcycle. Uh, Kakashi6 asks, is the color highlighter yellow? That's what it appears to come across as. Not exactly. In person, it looks much more material metallic green yellow than just yellow. Um, if you look in the light, it's got a hue of green off of it, which is why I said it's similar to that old Triumph acid green colorway that they used to do for the street triples. Um, but yeah, it's not as highlight or yellow as you would think, but it is very yellow, don't get me wrong. Fulcrum asks, how much different is the ride from a Tuono? Ah, uh, very different. Uh, Tuono, the one that we have here is the 1100 factory. That is a ludicrous, ridiculous machine um, that should only be piloted by true squids. Uh, this is a much more easygoing, relaxed, good sport bike all around. Uh, Meta Butt Stuff asks, how would you compare it to something like a Triumph 675, a Street Triple or a Daytona? Very, very different from a Daytona or a Street Triple. A Street Triple is actually, except for the bars, way more aggressive and capable than the RS660, but a similar level of fit and refinement and finish on it. Uh, a Daytona is totally different than this motorcycle. The Daytona is way more aggressive, way more pitched over, way more crazy top end power. Um, super, super different than the RS660 over here. Kilroy, but this is Noel, asks, is Yam gonna cover it with Bumble stickers? Probably not. I would be very sad to put this bunch of stickers on this. Uh, CG Zinu asks, if it wasn't radioactive McDonald's colors, what would you pick? I kind of wish that they had done like the Aprilia blurple with red wheels. That would have been really cool. Just like a flat blurple with some Aprilia logos and then the and then some red wheels. I think that could have looked really cool. But the blurple black colorway that they did had the mismatched wheels and I, I really wanted the matching wheels. I think it's really important. Um, War War asks, seat height. Is it possible for a shorter rider to feel comfortable riding it in the city? Is it possible to lower it? I know you hate that. Thank you. The seat height is actually pretty good. It's a, I would say over like a Ninja 400, it's a little bit taller, but over like a R6, it's a little bit shorter. I find that when I sit on this thing, I have a bend in my legs, the seat height's pretty good, but I'm also about 5'11", almost six foot-ish with my motorcycle boots on. So for me, I can fit on most motorcycles. Um, Spite with the little question here asks, can we call it Meller Yeller? And the answer is no. Matthew asks, does it track day better than a 675 stock for stock? No. <laughs> well, I don't know yet because I haven't taken this thing out to the track, um, but 
the 675s are very capable bikes. Flipmoto asks, how dorky slash cool do you feel about calling it acid yellow? I don't feel dorky or uncool calling it that at all. It looks very acid yellow to me. Uh, Zintarian asks, how does the power compare to 600 and 650 class bikes? Okay, so this is a big one and I'm gonna answer it just very in depth right now. So uh, in terms of bottom end punch, it has much better bottom end punch than a 600 because you can feel the extra displacement from the 660 engine and it's a parallel twin, so it's got fewer cylinders having to do the work, so you don't have to wind it out. So it's like a punchy twin in that way. Um, once you get it above seven or 8,000 RPM, you do feel that the power curve doesn't spike up like a 600, but it feels way faster than a 650, like way faster. I mean, it makes a solid 30 more horsepower than a uh, Ninja 650, for example, or a Z650, or 35 more horsepower. That's almost 50% more. Um, so it feels way faster than those kinds of motorcycles, way faster than an MT-07. And the bottom end punch feels about as good. You gotta wind it out a little bit more than an MT-07, for example, but it feels way faster than a 650 class bike. And it feels a little bit more sluggish than a 600. It's a really, really sweet mid spot for me. Tube asks, do a kickflip. Okay, <laughs> I will try next time there's a skateboard in here. Bill Moak asks, is it as good as people slash yourself expected, overhyped or nah? So in the beginning of the video, I mentioned to you guys that it is every bit as good as the hype would lead you to believe. And I still think that this motorcycle is every bit as much of a great motorcycle as everyone says it is. Um, it's really good, I like it a lot. Uh, Flip Moto says, can it pop a dank nooner? It certainly can. Uh, in second gear, clutch it up, it'll just float a nice little wheelie. Um, I probably need to practice a little bit more on this thing because I feel like I have to wheelie six different bikes every week and I never get used to doing it on any of them, but I can probably float a pretty good wheelie on this thing. Linewalker asks, can it out Biscotti the other Biscotti boys? Uh, yeah, because this thing's still pretty exclusive, still very yellow. I think if you pulled up to a gas station, um, you'd have some fun with it. So Caveman asks, after riding the RS660, who do you feel the bike is for? This motorcycle for me is the ideal motorcycle for a guy or girl who is on their second motorcycle, wants something sporty, wants something they can ride every day, wants to go to the track maybe three or four times out of the year, have some fun, let loose, cut up on the racetrack, but they can only have one motorcycle. This is it, this is the motorcycle. And they wanna buy brand new, of course. Ninjas Please asks, what's one thing you think is perfect on the bike and one thing you would change immediately? Um, one thing i change immediately is the exhaust note, for sure. I think every bike should have an exhaust. It sounds awesome. And one thing I think is perfect on it is honestly the brake feel. I really, really like the brake feel. I'm curious to see how it's gonna feel on track after some abuse, but it's pretty good. Um, the Brown Sand asks, how aggressive of a riding position does it have? Is it more like the Ninja 650 or more like the Ninja 636? Kind of answered this already, but it's somewhere in the middle of those two, but definitely leaning more towards the sporty side of things. Um, P. Fowler asks, does the Parallel Twin have as much character as the V4? Yes, it does. This is actually a very spicy little engine and I really like revving it out. Uh, Jaded asks, how does the front end confidence feel when turned in and approaching apex? Like I mentioned in the video before, uh, this motorcycle on the side of the tire is very sure-footed. It doesn't flick in super fast, but once it's set and on a corner and you're diving towards an apex, you feel the front end perfectly. You know exactly where it is. You can point the motorcycle exactly where you want. Um, for everyday kind of street riding, it's pretty fantastic. It remains to be seen how it's gonna do on track, but I think it's gonna be pretty good too. Um, Mr. Chicken Salad on Toast asks, does the engine have the character or is it a typical P-Twin? It's very, very different than a normal uh, P-Twin. And Kawi Sama here with the last question asks, how are the stock tires on the RS660? If I remember correctly, these are Rosso Corsa twos or threes? They're twos, Rosso Corsa twos. This is a great tire, very sticky, very appropriate for street use. Um, and they work great. They really, really work pretty great. That's gonna do it for the questions from our Discord boys for today. I hope you guys enjoyed this first impression ride and look on the RS660. Remember, I'm giving this motorcycle away. Be sure to check that out in the links in the description below. We'll catch you in the next one. See you later. Wow, look how pretty this is. You know what else is pretty? My beautiful face and this next Yammy Noob video. Click it right over here and check it out for yourself. There's fun memes in it, maybe Hayabusa's, maybe some cool stuff. There's only one way to find out. Click that video. Do it now.